Hi there. So in this video, I'm going to be talking a bit about uh, academic integrity, what it is, um, and linked to that also artificial intelligence, AI, uh, how that's becoming quite a big issue in education. So if you are doing um, IB, then you'll probably know this term already. That's the phrase that IB uses. But if you're doing IGCSEs or AP or different programs, um, stick around because it's the same principles and hopefully they'll give you, this will give you some, some ideas. So, okay, let's start with a few definitions then. So integrity really just means being honest and knowing that you're doing the, the right thing. You can't really fall foul of this accidentally. Um, you know what's yours and you know what's not yours. Um, I'd be used to call this academic honesty until a, a few years ago. It's now updated this term. So uh, academic integrity is the thing that we are talking about. So let me give you some examples of what sort of things could get you in trouble um, especially with IB. Um, sharing answers, I know in some cultures that's not seen as a terrible crime, um, but certainly in IB's eyes, especially if it's work that you're going to submit to IB, um, that's definitely not allowed. Um, getting your parents, your tutors or other students to do the work for you. Uh, it's different from a study group where you're supporting each other and checking each other and, and knowing what's and helping each other understand content, that's different. Um, if somebody's actually doing the work for you, uh, that's not allowed. Tutors sometimes uh, do get a little bit too enthusiastic um, and help too much. Uh, that's, that's That can be a problem. Um, making up data in an experiment or study, you've got to be able to prove that you've actually done the, the experiment if you're going down that kind of path. Uh, bringing material that's not allowed into exams. Some, some of the final exams in IB, uh, you are allowed to have calculators. Uh, they're very specific about which exams they are. Um, most nearly at well, all exams for IB, certainly you're not allowed to bring in any pre-written notes to the final exams. Uh, so be, be very careful about that. Indeed, even having a phone on you, physically on you, uh, in the exams uh, could get you reported, even if the phone is completely turned off. And lastly, purchasing essays, um, somebody else writing the essays for you, or things like that. Um, also, obviously not allowed, it's going to get you a problem. Other things, plagiarism uh, is really copying, is a fancy word for copying. Uh, usually that happens with external sources. Um, taking credit for somebody else's ideas, often online, people copy and paste things, whack it into their own work and pretend that it's theirs. Um, paraphrasing ideas, again, taking somebody's ideas, whacking it into their work, changing a few words here or there, um, and without saying where it came from, that's basically passing off the work as your own. And in academic standards, in academic um, areas, that, that's pretty poor. Um, and also looking at another student's work during an assessment, obviously that's definitely not, not allowed. Um, so a few examples there. In general terms, I find that when there are problems, often it's students who haven't managed their time very well. They panic a little bit. It's last minute, uh, Sunday night, or just before the deadline is due, especially with um, internal assessments or coursework. And they, let's say, they panic. Um, they find things online. They want to include them. They don't really know how to include them properly. And so they get in these sort of problems. And it is a big problem because um, your IB coordinator is not allowed to upload anything they think is uh, uh, comes under the case of academic integrity. Uh, so be, be just be very careful with that. Um, as I mentioned at the top of this video, um, OpenGPT is a form of artificial intelligence. It's a new kind of chatbot, uh, and it's a very powerful tool. You can answer, you can ask it all sorts of questions, and it will come up with a, a range of, of answers. Um, I've, I've seen some cases where students have also used it uh, to produce essays and or try and produce essays and things like this. Um, there are lots of issues with this. Uh, in general terms, it's not that good at the moment in terms of academic level um, and the voice that it produces. Usually it's pretty easy to tell that that's not the student voice um, who submitted the work. There's usually quite a difference between them. Um, the actual content itself is not particularly detailed. Uh, and there's a few other things it does that it doesn't do particularly well. It may well do in the future, but for now uh, it really doesn't. Um, and also teachers will be checking even more probably now so with this um, orally, like asking you along the way uh, about your work and the stages you're at and how you're progressing. So you, you would need to be able to justify what you're doing and explain what you're doing 
to them. So uh, really highly would not recommend using using this because it's um, again it's going to get you all sorts of all sorts of problems and it's it's a, it's a shortcut. And in IB there and academic levels that in academic world there aren't really shortcuts. There's a, a poster here I want to go through briefly and then just explain to you. Um, this is from IB about it gives you some ideas about acting with integrity. Um, the first one is just act honestly and ethically. You know uh, what's right and what's wrong um, and what you should be doing and, and what you shouldn't be doing. Um, try not to get an unfair advantage in coursework. Again, you know what you've done and what you haven't done. Um, make sure you know the rules, uh, the school's rules, but they may be, they may be um, slightly different from IB's rules. Um, but they'll have their own rules and, and procedures for what, what happens. And, and the big one is if you do take somebody else's work, then you have to say where that work came from. It's really that simple. Nobody gets in trouble for referencing too much, but you can get in a whole heap of trouble for not referencing. So if you're not sure, check with the teacher or just put that reference in there. A few other things here. Um, to be aware of, you may be approached by other students, possibly in other schools. I've had that before, asking for for help. Um, you have to report that if you've if you've seen it. Um, you have to be responsible for what you've done, um, and don't worry about it too much because you know what you've done. If you don't, if you don't do anything wrong, then this isn't really going to be an issue at all. Um, make sure you are maintaining academic integrity when you've got group work. Uh, make sure everybody's working together. Um, make sure you know how to collaborate well and share work, uh, especially when using social media. It's a, it's a particularly big thing. Um, and maybe the biggest thing here is overcome procrastination. I'm sure if you are an IB student, procrastination is a word you're probably quite familiar with. Um, tackle things early on. Uh, just because a deadline is three weeks away, it doesn't mean you have to do it um, or start doing it after two and a half weeks. Um, the earlier you can do work, the better quality you're going to produce. People need time to produce quality um, and you want to make sure this is the best quality that you can do um, before you submit work. So give yourself time. Um, that will also avoid the chance of you panicking uh, and possibly doing something silly uh, near the actual deadlines. So this is an interesting thing from Turnitin, which a lot of schools use. It's a, a quite a powerful software um, that checks uh, work against other work on the Internet. And it came up with different types of, of problems that it had. You can see on the left here the severity, uh, the number one most severe issue, and then the frequency that it happens on the right-hand side. So I'll just run through these fairly briefly. Um, the, the, main, the most severe one is obviously putting somebody else's work in as your own. Uh, and you can see it happens quite frequently as well. Uh, that's obviously going to get you a whole heap of um, problems, and it's also very easy to detect. Um, second one, containing significant portions of text, so copy-paste, that kind of thing, Control-C, Control-V, um, maybe changing a few things here and there, which is the same, which is, moves us on to number three, but generally it's somebody else's work, and you're trying to disguise or hide that by moving a few things around. Um, all those things generally very bad ideas. Um, just put references in if you know where it came from. Uh, it's very easy these days to do references on Word or on Google Docs. Um, put those in, it looks a lot more professional. And also don't wait until the end. Some people do the whole thing, then go back, and then there's a very big risk that you're going to miss something, uh, and that can give you a really big problem. So as you're working, make sure you're, you've got those references and you, you put them in as you're going along, not at the very end. A few other things here, um, recycling, borrowing very generously from another work, again, without citations, um, combining very well cited sources with copied passages. Again, that's an unusual one, but it does happen. Um, what is common is mixing copied material from multiple sources, putting it all together, hoping that nobody notices, a kind of jigsaw approach. Uh, sometimes people actually will cite websites that just don't exist or don't work. That's pretty unusual, but occasionally. Um, and maybe number 10, okay, sometimes including proper citations, but relying too much on the original wording. Uh, again, sometimes people copy and paste entire chunks, entire paragraphs, like hundreds and hundreds of words, and that's just padding. Uh, examiners can see straight through that. 
Um, so if you are paraphrasing or using other quotes, do it do it sparsely. Don't go don't go crazy with it. A few things to sum up then really here at the end. Firstly, it's just not worth taking shortcuts. Um, the consequences that if you are found out, um, which I've had to deal with, unfortunately, with some students are really severe. Uh, it would be the end of your diploma in, in some cases. Uh, it's just not worth it. Um, equally, some students do tend to worry and panic about their turn it in percentage or things like this. Uh, you can't generally break the rules by accident. You know what is yours and what's not yours. And ultimately, it comes down to integrity. You know what's right and what's not right. Um, so as long as you follow that, that, that idea, that principle, then you will be fine. And lastly, the most important one, really, it's much, much better to create something that is yours, even if it's not completely perfect, than try and submit something that isn't perfect and beyond your level when you know that it's not actually your own work. Um, just be yourself, submit your own work. You can then be confident that the grades you get reflect who you are and they're the grades that you actually deserve, which is which is fair. Um, OK, so I hope it's given you a brief run through of academic integrity. If you do have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments. Thanks very much for listening.